This is the 11th video in the scripting series, and today we are covering randomness and Roblox. I'm going to cover math.random and the random data type, and then I'm going to go over a little example at the end. At the top, I'm creating a random number with the math.random function. Below, I'm creating a random number data type, and then using it to generate a random number. Both of these create a pseudo random number between 0 and 2. So both of these could generate a number that is either 0, 1, or 2. You should note that I did say pseudorandom, which means a number that isn't truly random. Computers are 100% logic driven. As a result, they can't produce true random numbers on their own. In order to produce a more random number, it is best to use a seed. If you've played Minecraft, you may be familiar with this. A random seed is a number used to initialize a pseudorandom number generator. Without some seed, the numbers produced may be predictable. Luckily, Roblox staff members have produced an internal entropy or randomness source, so both math.random and the random data type are more difficult to predict. At this point, I'm only going to continue talking about the random data type because it was created to address some of math.random's shortcomings. As I said before, here I'm creating a new random data type. The next integer function can be used to get a random number between two values and including those values. So both the parameters are necessary for this to work. This will only produce integers or whole numbers. So it'll only produce 0, 1, or 2 in this case, and it won't produce anything like 0 0.5, 0 0.85, 1.5. If you don't want to be limited to whole numbers, then you can use the next number function right here. This will produce any rational number. Without an argument, this function returns any number between 0 and 1, but not including 1. And then with arguments, this function would return any number from the first argument to the second argument, but not including the second argument. So here, this would return anything from 0 up to 30, but not including 30. So you could get 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 30, but you can also get 0 0.335, 0 0.997, 25.987, anything between. When we create this random data type right here, we do have the option to add our own seed. That's what I'm doing down here with the 10. It does take one parameter that's optional, and we could add whatever seed we want. For example, you often see that people will do os.time, and this will get the current time in seconds from January 1st, 1970. As you can imagine, when someone's playing your game, it's pretty random how long it will have been from January 1st, 1970. So that's a decent source of randomness right there. Instead of a seed that changes, you could also use a fixed seed such as 10. The reason you might want to create multiple random number generators and set a seed to a fixed number is so that you could create the same set of random numbers multiple times. Because I set both of these random number generators to have the same seed, when I get the next random number from these, they'll actually be the same number. As you can see, the loop is printing two of the same random number. One reason that you might want to use a fixed seed like this is if you have a game that creates maps based on random numbers. So if you have one level or map that's created with a seed of 10, then the next could be created with a seed of 20, 30, 40, so on. It doesn't need to be in an increasing order, it could be random. But as long as you have it fixed, then those maps or levels could be reproduced. Now let's go over the example of what I showed in the beginning. At the top, I'm creating a random number data type. And I'm not going to give it a seed just because we have Roblox internal entropy system and that's good enough for me in this case. Then I have an infinite loop and I'm creating a new part setting it to a random brick color. This is something else that's random right in here. We can get a random brick color with brick color dot random. Then I'm setting the size to a random size. I'm getting a integer between 1 and 10. So this could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. That's for the x, y, and z components of the vector 3. Then for the position, I'm going to also set that equal to a random number. But here, I'm going to get any number between negative 50 and 50. So this could be negative 50, negative 49, but it could also be any number between any rational number. So 49.5, 54, 532, anything. That's for the x component. For the y component, I'm doing anything from 0 to 100. And then for the z component, I'm just going to keep it 0. Last, of course, I'm setting the parent equal to the workspace and then waiting one second. Just like the beginning, when we run this, you can see these parts randomly falling, different in the X and Y components, and brick colors are random as well. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Like the video if it helped you out, and subscribe for more in the future.